This is an overview of the PRT maker used with the spline and the PRT here. Let's first create a spline. It will be just a free hand line in the XY plane and then we'll convert it to a PRT here with spacing of 5 in both the viewport and the renderer. We have 85 particles all together along the spline and then we'll create the PRT maker which by default has 100,000 particles at render time, but we'll reduce that to 10,000 and we'll disable the viewport count so both the render and the viewport will have the same amount. All the particles are currently at the object origin, but we'll add a magma modifier, set the output node to position channel, and we'll use the integer channel index, which contains the index of the particle, the order within the particle stream. Then we'll create a particle query operator and we'll connect the index to the second input. And the first input will be the PRT here particle system. We'll take the position and output. And if we take a look, the viewport uh, becomes undefined because every particle above 85 will get an invalid infinite position. In order to solve this, we'll have to take the index channel and calculate the modulo. That means we're going to wrap around. Whenever we reach the particle 85, we'll start again from the beginning. So now if we have 10,000 particles, each time we reach 85, new particles start at the same positions. Right now, all particles are sharing the same position, but we could add a value to the position in order to shift along the x, the y, and the z-axis. Instead of using a static vector, we could calculate a new vector based on the iteration of the particles. So each time the particles start again from the beginning of the spline, they would shift a unit up. We'll convert the index to a float, divide by the count of the particles on the spline also converted to a float and then we'll connect the result to the add and convert to a vector when we feed the value into the x input we get the particles along the x-axis if we swap with control w or shift control w to y and z we get the particles shifted along the y or z Instead of using vertical distribution, let's create circles along the spline. We'll use the make circle black op, which needs a Z offset. We'll set it to zero. Then we'll feed in the value calculated on previous step as the angle, and we'll set the radius to five. If we pipe in this into the add operator, we're going to get circles with the size of five. And since the distance between the particles was 5, they are now overlapping. We can set it to 2.5 and this will give us touching circles along uh, the spline. If we select the spline and start moving its vertices around, our PRT maker is going to react correspondingly. Instead of having the circles flat on the XY. Let's orient them along the axis. We'll use the transform vector by normal and tangent uh, black hop. We'll insert it into the flow and we'll add the normal and the tangent channels which are available in the PRT here as outputs to this uh, operator. Then we'll connect them and our circular cross-section is now oriented along the spline. We'll set the radius to 10. Now we can change the number of particles in the PRT maker to make the cross-section more or less solid. Let's keep it at 10,000. This gives us a nice tube along the spline.
Instead of using uh, the same radius along the spline for the tube, let's create a cone. We'll move those operators a little bit to the side. We'll create a divide operator and divide the modulo converted to a float by the number of particles, which is already converted to a float. And we're going to multiply the radius by this value. This value will fall off from 0 to 1 along the spline. We can enter the name of the input, we'll call it radius, and we'll enter a node controls the radius of the tube. We'll expose it in the modify panel, and while you cannot see it in the recording, the tooltip of the spinner would show that node. We'll insert a power operator and add another input to control the exponent. This will be the fall off of the radius along the spline. We'll enter once again a note describing what this control does and we'll expose it to the modifier panel in order to be able to control both the radius and the exponent without having the magma flow editor open. Currently our fall off is going the wrong way. We want it to be thick at the beginning and thin at the end, so instead of just using the division which goes from 0 to 1, we're going to subtract from 1. This will give us exactly the opposite, from 1 to 0. So now at the root we have 1, and if we change the exponent we can make it really thin and then even invert it the other way around. But in general, values above 1 are going to produce thicker look. Interestingly enough, if we disable one of the flows of the add operator, we can either remove the cross section or remove the distribution along the spline, but keep the cross sections, which produces really interesting shapes. Let's re enable the add operator and tweak distribution of the particles and the hair spline. First one is modifier to the hair spline. We'll set the strength to 50 along all three axes. We'll set it to fractal and enable the animated noise. This gives us an animated spline and our PRT maker is also following and creating more or less cross sections as needed. We'll then change the spacing in the viewport to 0.5 this gives us a lot more particles along the length and not enough particles for the cross section, so I'll have to add another zero and create 100,000 particles in the PT Maker. Now we have a relatively solid tentacle looking uh, construct. We can change the exponent and play back the animation, and we can see that our PT Maker is following the motion of the PT here, which is following the spline.